What's up guys, I'm Brad Rodriguez from Fix This Build That, and today I'm gonna to show you three easy DIY kitchen organization projects. I'm only using a basic tool set, and each project is about 10 bucks or less worth of lumber. Now these projects are great to tame and organize your kitchen. Stay tuned, I'll show you just how I did it. I know some of my projects use tools out of reach for a lot of people, but not today. Today I'm using only the things you see here on this table. Now these are great tools for a variety of projects around the house or in woodworking projects. I'll have links to these or similar items down below in the description. Now for the first kitchen organization project, we'll start with the easiest. We store our pots and pans in the cabinets on our kitchen island. The pots stack pretty well, but the lids, those are always a pain. I thought some door storage would be a perfect solution for the lids. Now the crucial measurements to get are the width of the cabinet opening and the distance between the sides of the doors. The lid racks are made from these quarter inch strips of poplar that I got from Home Depot. And each piece is an inch and a half wide and three feet long. And three of these cost under $5. I'll be making the cuts for all these projects with this miter box and saw I picked up for 14 bucks. It clamps or screws down to a work surface and it has these cool cam clamps that hold the work piece in place while you cut it. Now the racks are extremely simple to make with one long piece that runs the width of the door and a series of spacers to make room for the lids. I started by cutting the one inch spacers for the first rack. I need six spacers, so to speed up the process, I set up a stop block using the extra cam clamp and a little scrap of wood. So instead of measuring one inch every time, I just butted the wood against the block and then made my cut. The saw leaves a good bit of tear out on the back of the cut, and I knocked it down with a 180 grit sanding block. The main part of the rack is made a half inch shorter than the cabinet opening. Now this will leave a quarter inch on both sides for clearance as the door closes. I sanded the piece smooth and broke all the sharp edges before assembly. Now before putting the rack together, I did a quick mock-up to make sure the lids would fit. Now three spacers was just enough for my lids, but make sure you test your own to get the right height. I glued the three spacers together using a combination of yellow wood glue and CA glue. The CA glue gives a good quick hold and the yellow glue will give it strength when it dries over time. Oh, and be careful when you use CA glue, it'll bond to your fingers faster than a tongue to a frozen flagpole. After the CA glue bonded the pieces together, I smoothed that whole spacer glue up flat on all sides with the sanding block. Then I attached the spacer to the long piece using that same method, and this time I clamped it down for a few minutes just for good measure. I repeated the same process with two more racks, then I made sure all the edges were smooth before moving on. Now to drill the mounting holes, I'm using a countersink bit, and it makes a pilot hole with a drill bit, and then the cutters at the base of it make a recessed countersunk hole. This lets the screw sit flush or below the surface when installed. To finish up this little project, I applied a couple coats of water-based polyurethane, sanding between coats with a higher grit sandpaper. Now the racks are mounted to the cabinet door with screws. I'm using one and a quarter inch screws, but if your spacers are different, just make sure that the screw won't blow through the front of the door. I held the rail in place and I drilled a pilot hole for the screw on one side and then attached it. Then I positioned the other side and screwed it in place as well. Now the top rack is going to hold small lids, and I moved it up just enough where that smallest lid wouldn't catch on the upper rail. Just make sure you account for pull-out trays if you have those also. Don't ask me how I know that. On the other cabinet door, I just used one rail in the center to hold our largest lid. And hey, if you're new here and you like what you're seeing, go ahead and subscribe, and tell me what tools you're working with down in the comments below. For the second project, I'm going to one of the most used drawers in our kitchen, the silverware drawer. And we had one of those cheap plastic dividers, but things slid around and the openings weren't exactly the right size for our needs. I took the tray and all the stuff out of the drawer, and then I filled it back in with where I would want the things to go. My wife had some little crafting tape and I just used that to mark out where the dividers should be. I'm using half inch thick poplar for this project, and I used three of the two and a half inch wide, three foot long boards, which was just over $11. I started with the openings for the forks and spoons and it's made of a top piece and two dividers that are the same length. To make things faster and easier, I cut the two similar pieces together at the same time. Now this is a good alternative to the stop block method that I showed earlier. I cut the top piece and then I started laying out the joinery. The drawer is joined together by screws and I'll use the countersink bit and one and a quarter inch screws here as well. Now using a two x four clamp to the work table gave me a good reference to keep things steady while I was drilling but it's not the greatest solution for driving in screws. When I started securing the pieces together, the twisting force of the screw wanted to turn the divider. So I was able to get around this somewhat by partially driving in the first screw, then putting the second one in and coming back and tightening up the first one. Now with the first section established, 
I put it in the drawer to get measurements for the remaining compartments. I cut the parts for the longer utensil bay, which is just going to be a basic T-shape. But this time, I got a little smarter when I joined the parts together. So instead of using that 2x4 as a backstop, I clamped the board to it. Now this kept the board from turning, and at the same time it held it square at 90 degrees. Much better. I cut a long piece that would go between the large and small utensil bays, and I took them back to the drawer to mark for joinery. The key to assembling this whole organizer is doing it in the right order so that you aren't trying to fit a drill into a 3 inch opening to attach a part. Now on this long board the screws are on the side, and they'd be seen when it's in use. So for those, I drilled the countersink deeper, leaving room for a plug. These are little 3 eighths of an inch flat bottom plugs, and they will fit perfectly right in that hole that's left by the countersink. With a dab of glue and a hammer, you can just fit them right in there. Now you could sand these flush, but a better way is to use a flush trim saw. Now this little guy is about $15 and has super fine teeth. It saws right through the plugs, and with a little sanding, they are perfect. I drilled and attached the large utensil bay the same way, plugging the holes since they are on the side as well and not the back. Now because our drawer slides don't come out all the way, I didn't want to make the organizer run all the way to the back of the drawer. I made a long back piece that spans the drawer and it basically cuts off the back 3 inches or so, so things won't get lost back there and never get found again. Now the final piece of the organizer was to separate the large opening in the back. I measured for that opening and cut a piece to fit, and then I secured it with screws the same way as before. And while I'm finishing up, I want to thank today's sponsor. The sponsor of today's video is FilterBuy. They're a family-owned business making all their HVAC filters here in the U.S. They have over 600 sizes in stock with free 24-hour shipping, and they can even make custom sizes for you. Now the part I think is brilliant is their subscription service. You save 5% on the filters, and you set them to deliver on an interval of your choice. No more storing filters or forgetting to change them. When the filters arrive on your doorstep, you just open them up and switch them out easy peasy. I have a link in the description where you can find out more about them. Thanks to FilterBuy for sponsoring this video. After everything was in place, I sanded the whole organizer and applied two coats of poly just like before. Now it fits great in the drawer and it's awesome to have custom spots exactly for the items that we have and use the most. Now the last project is a spice rack. Now if you're like us, you've got all these little spice cans and jars everywhere. We use like three of them all the time, but the rest are just a jumbled mess waiting for a recipe. This spice rack is going to use half inch poplar with one two and a half inch board and two one and a half inch boards. And you can get those for under $10. I cut three 10 inch long pieces from the one and a half and two and a half inch boards, but you could scale this as big or as small as you want to fit your needs. After you cut the first board, you can use it to mark the next pieces to make sure you get them all the same size as well. One thing I did here is to switch from sawing vertically to sawing horizontally. I like cutting vertically because it's easier to start on your line, but it's also easy to drift from the cut and get an uneven end. Now you can see how the vertically cut board has a little gap when I hold it up to this square. The horizontal cut board came out almost perfect, so I'd recommend going that way for better joints, especially on the wider pieces. As we've seen, the key to easy assembly is the right clamping setup. So to make each tier, I stood the 1.5 inch piece on edge, and then I put the 2.5 inch board on top of it. And I also used one of the other 1.5 inch boards on the back just for support. Then I could drill a couple pilot holes on each end and attach them with 1.25 inch screws. I plugged the holes just like before, and I repeated the same steps for the other two assemblies. To join the steps together, I used the edge of my work surface again as a clamping spot. I lined up the parts flush with each other, and then I clamped them in place and attached them with two screws. I didn't use any glue on any of these joints since it's just a spice rack, but if you're a belt and suspenders type of guy or gal, you can use glue on all these joints as well. Now to fill in the sides and make the rack stable, I cut parts from the second one and a half inch board. And if you want an exact cut list and plan, I've got a free download available via the link down below in the description for all these projects. I glued the three pieces together, and I clamped them for about 15 minutes before taking them out and attaching them to the spice rack. Again, nothing fancy here in the joinery, I just squeezed the end panel in as tight as I could, and then I attached it with screws from above. I did get a bit of tear out on the countersunk holes at the edge, and I filled that in with some sawdust and glue when I was filling the holes with those plugs. Now, the ends of the spice rack were left pretty ragged from the handsaw cuts, so I smoothed everything out with a 100 grit sanding block. And this is a great example of where having a random orbital sander would come in in spades. They're a cheap investment for the, the time that they would save you and the better finish that you'll get versus doing it by hand. 
And I finished up the spice rack with water-based poly and I put it in place. And in standard cabinets, it's gonna fit four of those smaller rectangular spice cans perfectly. And a wise man once said, having your spices organized is the key to happiness in life. Pretty sage advice if you ask me. Hold on, don't go just yet. I've got another project for you right there. You can go check that out. I think you're gonna love it. And if you want the dimension detail drawings for these projects, down below there's a link in the description you can check out. It's a free download. If you're not subscribed to the channel already, I'd love to have you as part of the team. And until next time, get out there and build something awesome.